Do you know that the West can control African citizens without deploying a single soldier or a single tank? It does not need boots on African soil. It does not need armies marching in African cities. All it needs is control of the internet. By controlling who has access, what they see, which ideas they consume, and which values shape their minds, foreign powers can influence African society more quietly than any army ever could. At first, this might sound ordinary, almost harmless, like simple digital connectivity. But once you understand that what people see is how they think, and how they think is how they act, the threat suddenly becomes clear. Entire generations can be shaped, guided, or misled without a single bullet fired. And this is not a theory. This has been happening for decades. African youth have been growing up on digital systems built outside the continent. Their data travels to foreign servers. Their conversations pass through foreign filters. Their online world is shaped by companies that do not belong to them and do not answer to them. Africans have been inside an internet that was never designed with African interests in mind. But now something enormous has happened. African leaders have decided that this era must end. If Africa wants to take control of its destiny, it must take control of the digital environment that shapes the minds of its young population. This is where the story becomes unbelievable. 54 African nations have quietly united to launch a new digital infrastructure that has shocked every major technology company in the West. Internet giants in Europe and the United States did not expect this. Analysts did not expect it. Even some African citizens did not expect the speed or confidence behind this move. So what exactly have the African countries done? What is this new internet system that everyone is talking about? And why is the world suddenly watching Africa with surprise and concern? In this video, we find out. Africa's digital transformation did not arrive with noise or grand announcements. It arrived quietly like a rising tide that people only notice once it has already reshaped the coastline. For years, the world dismissed Africa as a scattered digital consumer region. It watched the continent through outdated lenses and saw 54 separate markets struggling with infrastructure gaps. Meanwhile, Africa was building something entirely different beneath the radar. The real turning point happened not through dramatic speeches, but through something more powerful. Cohesion. In Conakry, leaders from across the continent gathered not to exchange dreams, but to execute what had already begun. For three days, the atmosphere felt different. Ministers and presidents did not speak like people imagining possibilities. They spoke like engineers who had already started construction and were simply synchronizing timelines. The energy in the room carried urgency and purpose. That tone was the first real sign that Africa was stepping into a new era where digital integration was no longer optional. It was becoming as essential as electricity and water. Once a continent reaches that level of seriousness, a shift in direction becomes irreversible. But this shift did not appear overnight. It grew gradually as different African nations experimented with their own digital ecosystems. Rwanda built one of the most advanced digital identity frameworks on the continent. Kenya developed fintech networks that caught global attention. Ghana invested heavily in interoperability. Nigeria nurtured one of Africa's largest startup ecosystems. South Africa strengthened cybersecurity frameworks. Each country was moving forward with undeniable momentum, but they were moving separately. These advancements were like powerful rivers flowing in different directions. The brilliance existed, but without alignment, the full impact remained unrealized. That began to change when Smart Africa stepped in and slowly redirected these rivers toward a shared ocean. The organization began acting like a coordinator for a continental architecture rather than a platform for speeches. As the pieces started aligning, Africa found itself standing at the edge of something it had never possessed before. Continental digital unity. With that unity came a new understanding that digital transformation was not an aspiration. It was a necessity that demanded structure and cooperation. Once the continent reached this realization, 
the next stage of the transformation became unavoidable. African leaders began asking how to flatten the friction that millions of people experience every day. A business owner in Lagos might build a thriving online platform only to discover that it fails immediately when crossing a border into Benin. A mobile wallet in Nairobi works perfectly at home, but becomes useless in another African country. A designer in Accra cannot easily work with a client in Kigali because identity systems and payment structures refuse to cooperate. Government services remain trapped behind paperwork and bureaucracy. These barriers do not just limit businesses, they limit imagination. When someone knows that every opportunity will be blocked by administrative walls, they learn to think small. The single digital market removes these walls by changing something fundamental. It removes friction. And when friction disappears, human behavior changes naturally. The single digital market is therefore not simply a policy. It is the beginning of a new African reality. Digital identity will not be a local document anymore. It will be recognized across borders. Payment systems will not treat every frontier as an international barrier. They will treat the continent as one connected space. A young entrepreneur in Lusaka will be able to sell to customers in Johannesburg without building 10 different systems. A software developer in Nairobi will work with clients in Abidjan as naturally as working with someone down the street. This smoothness is what builds real economic transformation, not hype, not slogans, practical daily convenience that allows ambition to grow without restrictions. Africa is not copying European or Asian blueprints. It is designing something that fits its own rhythm and its own needs. That self-designed architecture creates confidence. And confidence is what pushes nations to operate as a collective force rather than fragmented units. Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on Black Africa. Let's continue now. As internal alignment strengthened, the outside world began reacting. The reaction was subtle at first. Then it became sharper as African initiatives expanded. For decades, Africa relied on infrastructure built by foreign companies. Data traveled to European and American servers. Payments were routed through foreign networks. Digital identity systems were often managed by external firms. Cloud storage was hosted thousands of kilometers away. These dependencies worked technically, but they created a deeper vulnerability. Whoever controls the infrastructure controls the flow of information. Africa understood this risk and decided it would no longer allow its digital backbone to remain in someone else's hands. The response was the Continental Internet Exchange, which is now known across the continent as CIX. It is not a separate internet, but a continental infrastructure that keeps African traffic within Africa. Instead of bouncing through foreign servers, African data now travels through African corridors. This increases speed, it cuts costs, it strengthens reliability, and most importantly, it protects sovereignty. Alongside CIX, the African Digital Protocol was introduced to prevent uncontrolled data extraction. African data will remain on African soil unless there is a deliberate choice to move it. This principle shook the global technology industry. Many companies built their empires on the assumption that African data would always flow through their systems. That model is ending. As CIX and the digital protocol became operational, foreign companies realized that Africa was not just using technology. It was building it. And a continent building its own systems is not the same as a continent buying foreign systems. That shift creates a new power dynamic that global companies cannot ignore. When Africa begins aligning digital identity, linking payment platforms and harmonizing data rules, the world understands something significant. The continent is becoming a digital actor with its own vision rather than a passive market waiting for external innovation. This is why global companies appear worried. They are not worried because Africa is building slowly. They are worried because Africa is building powerfully. A unified Africa is not a small market. It is a market equal in size to Europe and North America. It is also the youngest population on the planet. Historically, foreign firms negotiated individually with African countries. 
they chose weak points. They pushed aggressive terms where they could. Fragmentation allowed that. But a unified digital Africa eliminates that strategy. Foreign firms now face a continental framework rather than 54 separate systems. They cannot shape policy through isolated agreements anymore. They must respect the collective architecture that Africa is creating. And Africa finally possesses something that gives it leverage. Coherence. And when a continent becomes coherent, its bargaining position strengthens automatically. Investors who once hesitated will now see a predictable environment. Innovation becomes easier because startups can build for a billion people instead of a single country. Policies become stronger because success in one nation becomes a template for another. And digital sovereignty grows because Africa controls its own architecture. These structural shifts create a new global reaction. Some countries welcome the change because a stable digital Africa offers economic opportunities. Others feel uncomfortable because a sovereign Africa is harder to influence. But regardless of the reaction, everyone has started paying attention. If this momentum continues, the Africa of 2030 will not resemble the Africa of today. Digital identity will work across borders seamlessly. A person from Ghana will authenticate themselves in Rwanda with the same simplicity as at home. Payment networks will function across the continent with ease. A merchant in Dar es Salaam will sell to customers in Lagos without treating it as an international challenge. Businesses will scale naturally from country to country. Government policies will become synchronized because nations will borrow frameworks that already work. If Kenya builds effective artificial intelligence policies, Malawi can adopt them. If Rwanda designs strong cybersecurity systems, Guinea can replicate them. Education will also transform because African youth will learn for a continental job market rather than a local one. A software engineer trained in Kigali will not be limited to jobs in Rwanda. They will be prepared for opportunities across Northwest, Central East and Southern Africa. And this transformation is not loud. It is not theatrical. It is steady. It is structural. And once this kind of transformation starts, it becomes extremely difficult to reverse. Because the real shift happens in the minds of the people. When Africans begin to see themselves as part of a unified digital world, their ambitions expand naturally. They start imagining careers, businesses and collaborations across the continent rather than within a single city. That psychological evolution is more powerful than any single technology. It is the foundation of a continental digital identity. Now, tell us, if you could choose where Africa stores its data, would you prefer it inside Africa or in foreign servers? If CIX made the internet faster and cheaper across Africa, what is the first thing you would use that new power for in your own life? In the comment section, share your thoughts on whether you would switch from Google or Western apps if there were a powerful African search engine or social platform. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We bring videos on Black Africa, its history, rich arts and culture, and things the world should know about. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.